Hello everyone, we're back with our monthly news roundup a little bit earlier than normal this month due to the impending Christmas break and we know that the holiday period is always a very busy time for everyone so today we'll give you a quick lowdown on what's been happening during December in the display market. With preparations well underway for CES, which takes place at the start of January, it's been something of a quiet month again in terms of monitor news from the brands who will be at the event, but there were still a lot of interesting and exciting announcements that caught our eye this month that are definitely worth talking about. The battle for the fastest gaming monitor continues in earnest as Philips and AOC both launched their new highest refresh rates offered on any panel type with their 1000Hz gaming monitors. More brands are unveiling their screens to compete in the market of the faster to OLED screens, there's new mini LED monitors to cover, and the world's first RGB mini LED monitor that's been announced this month. We'll also quickly recap some of the reviews and content that we've published this month and give you a few teasers ahead of CES on things to look out for that are coming very soon. So let's get into all of the latest news right after a quick word from this video sponsor. Christmas is right around the corner, and if you're looking for that last minute gift, or you just want to treat yourself, surely nothing beats a new monitor. Well, I like to think so anyway. Asus have you covered with their holiday sales running now until the 26th of December, including a wide range of great monitor deals you should definitely check out. This includes many highly recommended models, such as several of their super popular 32 inch OLED monitors, with a 4K resolution and a choice of refresh rates and panel coatings, as well as their super fast 480Hz 27 inch OLED monitor and their high pixel density 27 inch 4K OLED monitor, some of our top picks in that size. Whatever you're looking for, ASUS have you covered with a great selection of deals to choose from right now. You can check out all of the holiday sales using the link below. And where better place to start than the race for the fastest monitor, which certainly gathered pace this month. In the OLED space, LG and ViewSonic both unveiled monitors to rival the likes of Asus and Acer with the fastest OLED gaming panels around. Both of these new screens are 27 inches in size with a 1440p resolution and are built around LG Display's newest 4th gen primary RGB tandem W OLED panel with a 540Hz native refresh rate. They also support a dual mode function so that you can switch from the native 540Hz refresh rate to an even faster 720Hz when dropping to a lower 720p resolution. With 720Hz being the highest spec available in the OLED panel market to date, it's no surprise that we're seeing some other manufacturers adopting these new panels, and they provide a great option for those who want to switch between games which require highly detailed and immersive visuals and those that are focused more on speed and frame rates. At this time, neither of these newly announced screens are available anywhere outside of China that we've seen, and we're unable to confirm any other details on global availability and pricing at the moment. If you want to know a load more about 4th gen primary RGB tandem WLED panel technology from LG Display, then please read our detailed study and article on the topic linked in the description below. We've already reviewed in full the ASUS equivalent model and you can find a link to that review below if you want to know loads more about how this particular panel performs. In an attempt to rival these super fast OLED monitors, Philips and AOC have cranked up the race for the fastest gaming monitor title by announcing development of an LCD panel which can reach even higher speeds and a 1000Hz refresh rate. This mind-boggling refresh rate can only be reached when using the dual mode function, allowing you to double your refresh rate from the native 500Hz that runs at 1440p resolution, which is already very fast of course, and then 1000Hz when switching to a lower 720p resolution. Like on the OLED models, this could perhaps be interesting for esports and competitive gamers where every second counts, so if 1000Hz makes a difference in competitive situations, it could be worth sacrificing on the visuals. Both new monitors are set to feature the same 27 inch sized IPS technology LCD panel and therefore will be very similar in specs to one another. This includes a 1440p resolution, a one millisecond gray to gray response time spec, but we remain cautious about the performance of an IPS LCD panel at these kind of super high refresh rates. It's all very well with an OLED panel where they've got near instant response times anyway, but we're not sure whether realistically an IPS panel will be able to keep up with the consistent frame rate demands of 1000 Hz. We'll have to wait and see of course how these perform when we have chance to test them, 
The official product pages for these models haven't appeared yet, so the full specs and pricing are not yet known, but we look forward to seeing how these 1000Hz monitors measure up in reality, and we'll provide further details when we can. Neither AOC or Philips will be at CES unfortunately, so we'll hope for some further updates in the new year. Right, let's bring the speed down a notch and look at some of the other displays that are making headlines. One particularly interesting piece of news this month was the announcement of the world's first RGB mini LED monitor. HKC's M10 Ultra monitor offers a range of new capabilities with some potentially very impressive performance if it can live up to the specs. If you're wondering what the difference is between this and a regular mini LED backlight, then the RGB mini LED backlight replaces the traditional blue and white LED backlights with individually controlled red, green and blue mini LEDs. This means then that when the screen needs to display red for instance, the backlight will only need to light up the red light chip instead of having to obtain red by filtering through white light passing through a colour filter. HKC, the manufacturer, claim that this will offer better colour accuracy, higher brightness and amazing contrast, and they talk about the screen offering over 98% coverage of the very wide REC 2020 colour space, which would be a major step forward in colour gamma if it's achieved. The screen uses a total of 4,788 independent light control zones and independent control algorithms for these RGB colours. This would mean the equivalent of a 1,596 zone traditional mini LED backlight just split into the three colour chips for each zone here. This should offer very good local dimming capabilities which will help reduce halos and blooming. The HKC M10 Ultra uses a 32 inch size panel with a 4K resolution and it's got a native 165Hz refresh rate. That can be doubled to 330Hz when using the dual mode function when dropping your resolution to 1080p. It's not yet known what type of LCD panel this will use, be it IPS or VA, but this RGB mini LED backlight technology could be a really interesting alternative to OLED depending on what the price point comes in at. So watch this space for more information when we've got it. It's been another busy month for AOC in terms of expanding their G4 gaming series, as we saw not one, not two, but three new monitors announced from them. And one thing you can be sure of with these is that they should be budget friendly, so you won't need to break the bank if you want to purchase any of these. The first we want to tell you about is the U27Q4XM, which has a 27 inch fast IPS panel with a 4K resolution and 160Hz native refresh rate. There's a dual mode feature which allows you to double the refresh rate to 320Hz when dropping to a lower 1080p resolution, but most interesting is that this model also offers a 1152 local dimming zone standard mini LED backlight. That will give you high-end HDR capabilities including a 1200 nits peak brightness spec and display HDR 1000 certification. This one's available now in some regions. Second up from AOC is the Q27G4SP, which is another 27 inch fast IPS display, this time offering a lower 1440p resolution, a native 320Hz refresh rate, but without the mini LED backlight. This is currently only available in China, and news on availability and pricing in other regions remains unclear at this time. Last but not least from AOC is their 24.5 inch sized 25G4KUR monitor offering a screen size that's still proving a popular choice for some gamers. With a smaller area to focus on in competitive situations, this fast IPS screen provides a 1080p resolution and a high 400Hz refresh rate, which can be overclocked slightly to 420Hz if you need that little bit of extra speed. It's built around an IPS panel, so you don't need to sacrifice image quality like you do on many TN film models of this size, and whilst the visuals may not be as crisp as a high resolution display, the super fast refresh rate is well equipped to handle fast gaming situations. Again, this comes in at a great price and it's available now in many regions. Iyama went full steam ahead this month with the announcement of an extraordinary number of new displays in their G Master gaming series during the last couple of months. We saw models appear in all three of their Black Hawk, Red Eagle and Gold Phoenix lineups, there are far too many to feature here, but all of the details can be found in our Roundup article linked in the description below. They're all built around LCD technology panels and have sizes to suit everyone from the smaller 23.8 inch size monitors up to large format 43 inch options and everything in between of course. 
Specs, connectivity, and other features vary depending on the range and the model. So if you're looking to buy one of these, it's worth checking out all of the specs before you do. Hopefully our Roundup article will make that a simpler process to understand all of the different models and specs and the options that are available. Most of these new Iyama screens are available to purchase now at very attractive price points, and you can check pricing and availability in your region using the links in the article. We've also recently reviewed one of their new models, the Gold Phoenix GB3290 QSU, part of their top tier gaming range. So do check that out as well if you want to know more. This is a larger 32 inch sized IPS panel with a 1440p resolution and a 240 hz refresh rate. You can actually find only a few 32 inch size screens with the combination of 1440p and 240 hz plus refresh rates most of which are actually VA based. So it's unusual to find an IPS screen of this size and spec. So it's great to see a further option now available in some regions. In other news, ViewSonic announced the expansion of their VX gaming lineup with this new model. This 27 inch size screen has an IPS panel and offers a 1440p resolution and a native 400 Hertz refresh rate, which can be overclocked to 425 Hertz for a small additional boost. Adjustments are limited from the stand with only tilt available, but the screen does include features like gaming ambient lighting on the rear of the panel, so that can enhance your gaming setup. This has only been launched in China so far, so news on wider availability is still pending. Special mention goes to a new model being launched by ASUS this month. This one delivers a 27 inch sized fast IPS panel with a super high 5K resolution and a 180Hz refresh rate. This can be boosted to 330Hz when switching to a 1440p resolution using the dual mode function. It boasts stunning 5K visuals for amazing image clarity and sharpness and a 218 ppi pixel density, which makes it well suited to both PC and Mac users. There's a good range of other features, including ASUS's ELMB2 blur reduction technology to minimize motion blur and ghosting in gaming, and some mid-tier HDR capabilities with Display HDR600 certification. This looks an interesting new screen, and although pricing is yet to be confirmed, as it's part of the ROG Strix lineup, it should hopefully be more modestly priced than the ROG Swift range model. That means it could deliver a great spec with hopefully a reasonable price tag. In other news, we will soon be setting off to Las Vegas to attend CES 2026, and as always, we'll make sure we bring you all of the latest news, launches, and gossip in the monitor space. The event is taking place between the 6th and the 9th of January, and we can't wait to see what manufacturers have in store. Set to appear this year are Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, LG, Samsung, Dell, and many others, and we'll be there on the ground to bring you all of the highlights from the event. We're also hoping to meet up with both Samsung Display and LG Display to get all of their latest 2026 updates on their QD OLED and WOLED technologies and panels. Although we're unable to share any specific details at this time, with brands understandably tight-lipped at the moment ahead of the launches, we know there will be some really exciting new screens, so watch this space in the coming weeks. In fact, we've got three full reviews being published on the 4th of January of three exciting new screens that are only going to be announced and showcased for the first time at CES, but which we've been testing over the last month or so in order to bring you a full day one review. We can't say any more than that at the moment, I'm afraid, but these are very exciting new screens, so make sure you hit subscribe to our YouTube channel to see those as soon as they're published. In terms of new reviews, articles and content we publish this month, we've already talked about our review of the Iyama Gold Phoenix GB3290 QSU earlier. That's the 32 inch sized IPS monitor with a rare 1440p resolution and 240Hz refresh rate. You can find that on our main website. We've also recently published an article which explains Thunderbolt connectivity in a lot more detail, in case you want to know a lot more about this increasingly common connection type. We've seen this featured on several new monitors in recent months, including a couple that we've reviewed from Philips and LG. But if you want to know more about what Thunderbolt is, its benefits, and how it's different from things like USB-C, that new guide will hopefully be helpful. We've also recently published a guide video which covers what you need to look for if you're going to buy a new monitor for console gaming. All of the specs, features, and the things you should look out for, and some pointers also on how best to set up your console with your new monitor. That's available on our YouTube channel now if you're looking for a new console gaming screen. 
If you've been lucky enough to get hold of the new MSI MPG 271QRX50, their 500Hz QD OLED monitor, the second model in their range actually, or the ASUS ROG Swift PG27AQWP-W, their 540Hz OLED monitor, we've now published our best settings guide for both of those on our channel. These two screens are starting to appear in some regions to buy now, although others, including the US, are unfortunately lagging behind a bit due to import challenges. Anyway, those guides are available now for as and when you get those new screens. On the subject of availability, for those who've been patiently waiting for news about the Gigabyte MO27Q28G, we're pleased to report that it's finally appeared to buy in the US. To recap, this is an excellent new monitor boasting a 27-inch 4th gen WOLED panel with a 1440p resolution and 280Hz refresh rate. It's now available and in stock from a couple of retailers with an MSRP of basically $600. US We'll link to that in the description below if you've been waiting on getting hold of the screen for a while now. If you're looking to buy a new monitor over the festive period, you can also find our Christmas sales trackers on our main website, covering some of the best deals available from some of the main brands. There's some great offers on at the moment, including on some of our most recommended screens, so do check that out if you're looking for a new monitor. Right, that's about it for this month's update. All that's left for us to do is to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2026 from CES. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.